Let's learn how to use printf style debugging with STM32 microcontroller. Printf debugging used with serial wire weaver SWV which is a part of ARM Cortex M4 microcontroller architecture. So let's create a fresh new project in STM32 cube IDE and then I will show you how to use printf with STM32 microcontroller. Thanks to Altium software for sponsoring this video. The cloud based Altium 365 offers seamless collaboration between engineers along with version control capability. Altium is all in one platform for all the needs of PCB design. Feel free to check my Altium tutorial series to learn more. You can download free trial with the link given in a video description. Also you can sign up with the link altium.com forward slash yt slash binary update. So go to file in top left corner select new and select stm32 project and it would take few seconds before it asks us to select the part. So you see the part number stm32 f446re that's the microcontroller that we want to use it so once we filter that out we see nucleo f446re board shows up so we select the board here and then click on next and then you see by default you get this and we have to give the project name i would like to keep it very simple swv serial wire viewer and then c is chosen executable and stm32 cube project looks perfect click on next and then copy only necessary files will be checked by default we have to do nothing just click on finish and it takes few seconds before it configured the project for us it will be a basic bare minimum stm32 template project so when it's done it will present us ioc file which is basically a project configuration pin configuration file where we can choose and select the pin that we are interested in so look at this here we have the stm32 microcontroller so printf style debugging is very useful if you remember that in earlier projects we used to use it the uart to print the data on a serial monitor to check the sensor data what it is coming so if you use printf then probably you don't have to sacrifice your uart pin and you will use it for the other purpose so in the left pan this project pan you have this swv project and if we expand the core then we have the src source and then you have this main.c file so double click on main.c file and then it says open associated perspective we say yes because it will present a c and c++ perspective to write a c and c++ code now before we go ahead and uh, use the printf in our project in order to use printf in our stm32 project we have to add few lines of code into the syscall.c file under the source uh, folder so we have to go to syscall.c so double click and this file will open up and if i scroll down just down below the include headers we have to add few lines of code and i would have to paste this few lines of code you can copy and paste this code from somewhere in a download section in a description you can download the entire project or maybe the video attachment or you can check the comment section or description and you would easily get this one more change that we have to do apart from adding this few lines of code we have to come to the write function so this is the weak write function and i want to copy this line of code okay and just paste it down below and i have to comment this io put char because we are not using it and instead of io put char we want to use itm basically the printf is used with itm stimulus and underscore send share and that's basically allowing us to use the printf and itm if you look at the code that we have added okay so these are the macro that we have added okay it's basically some memory locations if you look at but it's an its stimulus on port 0 so we are using port 0 to generate the output using printf okay that's basically what it is so once this is done we have to save the file so click on save here or you can press ctrl s everything is fine then we have to go to main.c file and here we can start writing our code now I want to keep the code very simple and we will be just implementing a counter and as the counter increments the count value will be printed like 0 1 2 3 4 5 or something like that so we have to look and we have to define the variable here so let me see where we can define the variable here it's like a user variable I want to see so look at this private variable okay so I would say u int 8 underscore t and I would give the name count and then I make the value, the count variable value to be zero by default. And also in an include statement, you can see the private includes. So user code includes here. I want to add few includes here. So hash include. And I want to add C standard library because we are just writing a C program. Printf is a part of C program, std lib.h. So basically a C standard library. And then I just copy and paste. I love copy and paste because it saves the effort. And then std 
um, io.h okay so basically standard input output from the c programming and then i can scroll down and uh, we have the main function like every microcontroller has it and if we scroll down further we have the never ending while loop and in a while loop i would have to write the code that i want to uh, print so basically what we want to print we want to print uh, print f basically so use the printf function and in a printf function i would say the counter value and then i would colon and then slash uh, r slash n so it's basically a carriage written and the new line and i give the space and push in d and then i say here uh, after this i say count i pass this count variable once the count variable will be printed then i just copy and paste it below here and i say count has to be incremented count plus plus so that's basically how it will print and then we have to use f flush f flush and here we have to add the std out okay so this is basically this two lines of code is very important and since we want to print the counter value every one second i would have to say hall underscore delay control space to use the intelligence and 1000 milliseconds of delay so that's basically a one second of delay so once we done writing this code it's basically print this line and then it will print the counter value and counter value keep incremented by one every one second okay that's basically what this code is all about so on a top left menu bar you see this hammer button so that's basically built so click on this hammer and let's see if we have any error or warning so you see we are lucky enough to get zero error and zero warning so everything looks okay now since we want to use it printf to be as a part of debugging feature so we have to enter into the debugging mode so now we are into C, C++ perspective now to get enter into the debug perspective you see this bug icon in top menu bar it says debug SWV project so click on this bug icon and you see it present us this debug configuration so by default it says main and we have to we have to select this debugger here and then we have to do some settings so debug probe is st link and you see the st link we have to check this box and click on scan so it basically reads our st link uh, signature whatever it is now the most important thing is because this printf will be used as a part of serial wire viewer we have to check this enable button and that's basically allow us to use the serial wire viewer and the core clock frequency is 16 megahertz because we are using a nuclear board and we have not changed any clock or something ever since we created this project so it looks everything fine we have to click on apply okay and then click on okay and now hopefully all this debug configuration is done and uh, you see check here into the console and it says debugging is happening and it says confirm perspective switch and then when you click on switch then it will take c c plus plus perspective and bring it to us into the debug perspective and now see in the left uh, pan you see your project looks completely different than before and now it means that we entered into the debug perspective now before we do anything further i want you to go to windows and then we will go to show view and then under swv we have to click on this uh, swv itm data console so when we click on this then this new console window pops up down below okay swv itm data console and you see there is the setting icon configure trace so click on that and make sure we have to check this port zero okay that is because if you remember the macro that we have added into the syscall.c file we have added a macro to enable the port zero so that's why we enable this uh, port zero here and then click on okay and now before we start debugging we have to click this red button here this start trace so this red icon so when we click on this red icon that means we started uh, getting the debug traces so click on this red button don't forget it and on the top menu bar here on the left side 
we have this resume button so when we click on resume so click on resume and now you see the debug started and now you see swv itm data console shows the counter value like 0 1 2 3 up to 9 or something like 10 11 12 i hope you can see it now if i go to top left menu bar here and there's this button called suspend so i click on suspend and you see now the debug has stopped okay it suspended the debug session and now it stopped at the counter value is 19 so the moment i click on resume again you see it will start again and now it's 20 21 even if you we have given a delay of one second it stopped it's it was not incrementing so that's how it works now if i press the reset button on my stm 30 nucleo bot so let me press the reset button and it enter you see now the counter started with zero and one two three four so that way we can able to pass any variable so look at this main.c file so here we have printed uh, the count variable value in your project you can able to use any variable value any variable where you have store your sensor value or maybe some clock configuration or maybe ram or something whatever whatever the data that you stored in your stm32 code uh, where you want to debug and print it onto the serial console and see what it is coming then you can use this simple printf function and print it and check into the serial wire viewer data console and check whether you get the correct data or not that's pretty useful feature because if you don't use it then you have to use it your uart in order to use the serial terminal software but why to sacrifice UART pins when you have this printf feature that's basically given by ARM Cortex-M4 architecture and uh, you must use it if you are using STM32 microcontroller project. Now if you want to stop this debug session then on a top left menu bar you have this button called terminate. So when you click on this terminate button okay then the debug session will stop and it will bring you back to your c and c plus plus perspective this is how we will use the printf in our stm32 project and then we can print almost any variable value and it saves us to use any uart pin unnecessarily and i hope you have learned something from this video and in the next video we will going to do debugging step by step and i would show you how professionally how step by step you can debug and use all the feature that the debug perspective has to offer on stm32 microcontrollers i hope you have found this video educational and entertaining if you are trying to solve a problem and learn embedded systems check out our embedded system career plus course the link is given in a video description or in a comment section it's all you need to become a professional embedded developer thank you very much for your time and see you into the next video bye bye for now